welcome back. I'm going to be doing the episode two of this LS Swap Forerunner. I've been grinding for days, it feels like. I know it's not. I know it's not days, but getting the frame cleaned up. There's some factory inconsistencies here and there. Uh, that that one was me. I cut through it. I'm gonna get some of this uh, bad spots. You can see just just from the, when the factory welded. There were some really hot welds, so it it undercuts. Actually, this oh, there's a that's a factory frame defect. Found that earlier. So I'm gonna get everything cleaned up, welded up, probably make these frame reinforcements for both sides. And then I'm gonna start getting the engine together. We'll get it, I'll finish tearing it down and we'll get the valve springs out, get everything changed over, put the cam in it, put the new timing set in it, and then I have to bolt the headers to it. And then we'll fit it in the engine, see where it's gonna sit, and hope that transmission tunnel there is going to be enough if i have to i'll redo these two that lower corner and this lower corner just a little bit we'll move it in i'm hoping hoping i don't have to but there is a possibility because this chevy transmission is very very wide so i'm going to get the welder set up and get it welded get that frame all ground down and then i'll start getting those plates cut out for reinforcement because if you don't reinforce this part of that frame right here you chance this whole front end moving one way or another with that leaf spring front end because i cut out you can see over on that side there's a cross member that used to be there to hold that front end i will be putting a cross member back in but i gotta wait until the motor and front end and all that and then we'll put some gussets in to make this strong so frame cleaned up both sides that's uh probably all i'm gonna do for the night it, i already worked a 10 hour shift and i only like to put in a couple hours after work each night doing extra work so i'm gonna call it a night when i get back tomorrow i'll probably start doing some frame plates getting those fabbed up welded in and hopefully my tool i need for the engine will be in so we can start doing that cam and lifters valve springs all that i'll be back all right new day clean coveralls today we're gonna put, tear down the motor put new parts in it if i have time i'll try and get the cam in it tonight and then get it back together there's still quite a bit of cleanup to do on this motor you can see down in these ports it's it's still pretty dirty I'm, I'll, I'll get it cleaner but today i want to at least get the springs in, cam timing chain. I still need to clean up that intake plate. So I'm just gonna get into it. This uh, tool here just push pressure down on this to hold those valves. I push down on the springs and then this air fitting, I had to order this. I, I don't know what happened to mine. Started in the spark plug holes, just snug. Put your air line on it. Give it air slowly because if you go too quick, it'll spin that engine. And you hear it filling up. There it goes. So now that's holding. So we just crank this down until it releases these little, these little lock washers in there. You hear that click? That one's released. This one's not. So I'm going to have to tap it. All right, well that one is not seating, so we'll back it off. Try it again. 
This one's good. This one's not. You got to get both of them to release. Otherwise, I got to find my other tool and do one at a time. All right, that one's sticking. I'm going to have to figure out something else, I think. Well, I'm going to move to a different cylinder. I'll fight that one off camera. All right, let's try this side. Well, unfortunately, I think this motor's got a lot of miles on it. So we're going to do the old uh, rope twist trick. All right, so I'm going to get the rope that will fit down the spark plug hole. We just feed a bunch down that spark plug hole. Turn the motor over until it compresses against those valves with that string or rope or whatever you can fit in there. And then that should that should be enough to hold the valves closed to where I can get the springs off. Because I think this motor, more than likely coming from a wrecking yard, I guarantee has over 150,000 miles on it. But I don't know. Uh, I'm just guessing by how much coked oil there is everywhere. I got some small really nice and pliable and I think it's just nylon rope just gonna feed it in that cylinder I know this one's already down because we had air in it so that really helped turn on the engine I'm just gonna feed as much in it as I can all right that should be, that should be enough there's quite a bit in there just crank this over definitely coming up now that's up against something we're not going to push too hard. All right, let's get this all tightened back down. It's not wanting to release there either. All right, I'm going to take the spacer plate out here. See if I can get more of a stroke on that. Either that or I don't have enough rope in there to push up on these valves, which could be it too, so. Let's try that. Let's get a little more rope in there. The rope trick, you're just really hoping that you can get that thing to hit just right. All right, well, I'm almost to the end of my rope here. All right, I'm gonna try that. It's definitely up against the rope. All right, we're gonna take that spacer out. The spacer is clearanced for that. I think I'm just gonna have to put the rest of that 18 inches of rope or whatever I got left over and just hope I can get these loose. Just gotta be getting pretty full. Definitely not wanting to let go for some reason. Plenty of compression. Feel it hitting, it's just not wanting to release. So I turned the camera off for a second, trying to figure out the best way to release these. And I ended up taking a screwdriver right there and smacking it with a hammer a couple of times, trying not to bend these spring caps. But it finally came loose, so we just pulled these Little half moons, which I'm definitely gonna have to clean all this up. This motor is, looks like it's gone a long time either with no oil change or <laughs> cheap oil, or I don't know. I have definitely seen a lot cleaner engines. All right, now we gotta get these valve guide seals removed. We got a new one right here. I'm gonna grab a bowl so I can put some oil in it. All right, I just get some oil. That way I can put the new valve guide just kind of in it, roll it around. It's nice to have that well lubed. The valve guides are pretty, pretty, pretty crusty. It's hard to see that. You can definitely feel it. So these new seals are nice. 
nice and pliable. I, I just dipped this rubber side in the oil, get it lubed up good. And when I slide it back down, it's nice. It doesn't tear anything up. They do make these little plastic straw deals that go over your valves also, if you're afraid about tearing those. But they usually don't tear. You just take your time and get them on there good. Get them seated like that. Two new springs. And they do have a little taper to them. It's hard to see, but you know, slight Christmas tree look to them. Skinny end up top and down. Now I'm going to hope that I can use this tool the correct way to put it all back together. Because these grooves here will hold this in place. Okay. Make sure these are dropped in the correct way. There is a taper to them also. Well, maybe I do have to flip that around. It's not wanting to go in very good. There. Now, loosen this up. You just want to make sure those little half clips seat correctly. So I'm just going to knock out the rest of this. I'm going to turn up the music, get it done. I come back, we'll do uh, the timing chain and the cam, I think. Oh, and we'll make sure all those uh, rollers are up off the cam too, so we don't we don't run into any issues pulling that cam out. So I'll be back. All right, so I got the valve springs all done, and I was curious, so I decided to go ahead and scope this motor. There's just a couple of little, I'm trying to get it here to where it's easy to see. I don't know if we can see that little tiny bit of pitting right there. But all eight cylinders have just one little spot where there's some pitting. And I think maybe that's just where it was sitting at the wrecking yard or somewhere for a while. But it's got good cross hatching in there. But you can see there's good cross hatching. The cylinder still. Top of the piston has quite a bit of residue on it. But that should burn off with good gas. So at least I'm not as concerned with that motor. I thought maybe it was gonna have a million miles and be all washed out in the, in the cylinder walls, but seems seems to look good. Of course, we won't know until we get it in and made it up and get it, get it running. So just figure I'd give an update. I'm gonna get set up, start getting the timing stuff apart and get the cam out, so. All right, I'm back. I decided to go ahead and put it on the engine hoist. My engine stand's busy and I was gonna borrow one, but I don't wanna wait. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get, just get this done. I tried to clean up some of the motor. I made a big mess. I do have a regular drip pan down there, but I always throw cardboard down too because it's good soaker upper. You can see the oil pan. I'm just, I think I'm just gonna go to hot tank that. And then, so I already, I already have the pump off, the front cover off. So I already lined up the, the dot and the dot. So now all I gotta do is we'll get that cam out. Since we have all new timing, we'll just take that off. These two holes here, we can stick a dowel in once we get this cam spun and those lifters up. So I'm gonna get a couple bolts stick in there so we can spin that. All right, a couple water pump bolts for, fit just fine. Get a dowel. There's that. Cam actually, let's see. Cam does look like it's in decent shape. Looks good in there. So we're gonna get this new cam lubed up and installed. This cam says right on it. This is a stage three truck cam. Get some install lube on it. All over the place. This stuff is sticky.
a lot easier on the engine stand. Get the slime off my hands. These dowels come out. Uh, easier than that. Get a puller on it. It's stuck on there good. Okay, so I got that timing gear loose finally. I didn't realize it was pressed on. Get all my pullers out and that one worked fine. Didn't take much. Let's take a brass punch and you hear a seat. We gotta make sure everything lines up. That should be close enough so we can put that plate on now. Still in time. So I'm going to take a little time. I'm going to get this gasket off, clean all this gasket material up. I don't want to put any of this back together until I get that oil pan cleaned up. So I'm going to go get some things cleaned up. Uh, I'm going to find out if they want a new oil pump. Put the cam, old cam in the bag and in the box. All right, so. got a new oil pump. I'm going to get that installed. I did not get the oil pan cleaned yet. It's really bad. So I'm just gonna continue on putting things together. You gotta make progress on this. This is a high volume oil pump also. I got the pickup pretty clean. It was really bad. The oil pan looks like that inside. It's pretty nasty. This is about as clean as I can get this. New O-ring. Gotta find the bolts now. All nuts. Push rods in. Put a little dab of lube on each one of these. I just didn't want to fumble them all over the place. Do a fuel and kind of suction in with this oil in there. I'm gonna roll this motor over a couple of times and make sure I didn't screw anything up because that's always a possibility. did all right job cleaning up it's still pretty bad down here but some of this is pretty cooked in there so I'm just gonna knock a new seal in get a gasket get it installed Gaskets on backwards. Guess that's what I get. Got to, got to slow down and pay attention. Bet you that'll fit better. Well, that part's done. I'm gonna spend some time get the top kind of cleaned up. I want to get the valve covers on, get this valley cleaned up, and get that plate in here. So. These are the headers you got. So we're gonna get all these installed also before we try and set the motor in. It came with even came with the pieces to put your O2 sensor in right there. One on each side, some call for two, some call for one, depending on what fuel injection system, but we're gonna go with stock. I haven't checked the wiring harness yet to see if it has both, but these uh, these headers come with with plugs already, so if you don't need to use it, you can just plug it off. 
Um, and the collectors, this, this set came with gaskets and everything. I didn't see a brand anywhere. I did see holes in the box and bolts. So I'm going to have to do a count because uh, more than likely something's missing. Anyways, I'm going to get that cleaned up. Get it together. Once the oil pan is done, I did not get the oil pan cleaned yet. It's it's really, really bad shape. Just the inside alone. You can see all that crusty buildup in there. This is the windage plate that's in there and then even the outside. The outside's pretty bad, so I didn't get a chance to stick it in a hot tank, so that'll have to be tomorrow. But I want to get as much bolted on this engine tonight because I would like to be doing a mock-up install by this weekend. So once I get this, the rest of this on, I'll do a little update. And so I got a lot of it back together. The bolts that came with the headers here are the wrong size, so I need to get the correct size. I also found bolt broke off in there i'm gonna have to do some work on i'll get the oil pan cleaned and the intake on and the next video I'll, engine will be together so we could start fabbing it up getting it fit in the forerunner and seeing what else we might have to do what else what other issues we might even run across so hope you guys like this video um, let me know in the comments what you guys want to see more of